Hey. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back, back welcome to back. Home Build Happiness. And we're going to introduce the whole family. This is Durf. Hi, Durfit. That's Durf Cat. He loves his dad. He loves to give me chin rubs. It's Ron and Laren here. So listen, this is the final episode of this series. From now on, these videos are going to transition over to the Travels and Adventures playlist. They're going to be up in here. You can click on that to check them out. Let's take you for a tour around the rig. Show you where we're at, what we're doing, how this thing works. Let's get ready. Let's roll. Very sorry about the uh, all the noise. We got a lot going on right now. So listen, we are currently at Lake Wells, Florida. We're at a Lowe's. We're just traveling through the state about 80 miles a day. Sometimes you find yourself in some really great places. Sometimes you find yourself in some not so great places. All right, so let's give you a quick run through of this trailer. We're currently running our generator, so you're gonna hear that generator around the front. Let's talk. Hey, you remember that? If you look, there's a cat right there. He's right there's his eyes. <laughs> so you guys saw that, and I believe it was episode five, possibly. Let's go. So what you're looking at right here is a platform that we built for this generator to sit on. We just got a cable to the tongue. It runs our charger um, on cloudy days as well as anything we want to run inside. So I'm sure you guys remember the van. If you've seen our automotive playlist, you're going to see the rear end that we did in this. There's a bunch of other content that we're going to do on it as well. But this is our tow rig. This is what we're cool with. So there's three points of connecting power to this rig. Right here you see we have our first mode of connection, which is from the generator. That's a 20 amp um, line going into the trailer. And we can also run off of an inverter in the van. We can also power while we're in motion as well. And Laren, how else do we power this camper? Um, we power here by this 30 amp, 30 amp uh, plug here of unlimited power. <laughs> Guys, we've also got a 15 amp <laughs> plug. It's hiding underneath here. And then we've got some solar up on top. What's behind this door? Ooh, water. <laughs> water goes in here. So we've got the city water connection. We've also got our water tank connection right there. We don't really use this as much as we thought we would. We tend to run off tanks a lot more. Probably could have 86 that while we were building. And then in the back, we've got our, our air conditioner. That's a dual inverter LG 9500 BTU uh, unit. And it keeps this thing cool. It does a great job and it's not very loud at all. And then folks underneath here, you'll see our termination point and that's for all of our plumbing, shower and sink. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to your dish. And so this is what we're doing now. You've seen the camper, you've seen the build, you've seen pretty much what our life's gonna look like for the next indefinite amount of time. And there's a couple questions I think. Um, Two questions that have come up. We have, um, we've rehearsed only what the questions are I have no idea what she's gonna say. She has no idea what I'm gonna say. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> so. Cheers. And cheers to you if you're watching. And maybe you're partaking in the celebration as well. So, Lauren, what what were the best moments of doing this? You know, we, we got this trailer in Jacksonville, Florida. We hauled it down here. We went from ripping these walls out to everything. 
and it wasn't cheap guys so listen if you like the content you're enjoying what we're doing hey give us a like and a subscribe there is a chance a slim chance that one day YouTube will give us a little bit of coin maybe a penny maybe a couple of nickels but we can't do it without you guys clicking the subscribe button there's a bunch of metrics they look for that just happens to be one of them so we'd love it if you would do that all right all right um, so the question that you then asked me was what was the best moments of the build um, right now these are the best moments because it's done um, <laughs> Honestly, I would say probably the, the best parts of it. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of hands-on stuff. Like, I did some painting here and there. But I think the best parts was just being able to kind of spend time while you worked on it and just kind of learn different things from you that I had, like, literally no idea about. Like, I still wouldn't know anything about this electric if he hadn't done it and kind of talked me through what it was and, and these videos that he's made doing it to let you guys know what it is. Um, so I think that's really cool, just being able to spend that time together while the build was happening, and of course enjoying the finished product, I think are great. So, the truth is, these right here, that was her helping me. <laughs> All this green trim that you see, that's, that's her handiwork. That air conditioner went in and out and in and out of that door about four yeah. separate times and guys that thing is actually about 75 pounds yeah, it's, it's kind of heavy that was her help so <laughs> not 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 oh and the very first time when the trailer almost rolled away i did stop it from rolling away from the bus you guys you guys want a little story time so let me tell you the story since we're having fun and you're <laughs> listening this is more of a more of a have fun mm -hmm. celebration video mm -hmm. so when we first looked at this trailer guys the check hadn't even cleared the bank for it yet uh -huh. the dealer had just gotten the trailer in that day so we went to look at it it was just a trailer we we dropped the back door and there was a trailer exactly like this parked yeah like maybe it's five six feet in front of us yep not and very far I, without checking to see if it was chalked, kind of um, assuming it was chalked already, I, I had the back door down and I stood on the back door and my weight being at the very end of the trailer was enough that it brought the tongue off the ground and we started rolling towards the other trailer. This one just happened to be <laughs> I had jumped front. to the front and went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> And was able to stop it. I mean, luckily it wasn't it wasn't like full roll or anything, but it was rolling enough that if I wasn't there to like put my weight in to like stop it, the tongue would. What we've been buying the solar for, and the generator for, and the batteries for. There's Laren, right here. Ah, we just throw this down. Let's come on in here, guys. Oh, shit, shit. Hold on. I knew the owner's about to fuck our shit up. Hi, guys. We almost killed ourselves with our own trailer in like the first five minutes. Guys, guess what? This is it. Don't do anything without having it chalked yeah. or, or, or hooked to a vehicle because even with it chalked you can still get the, the teeter mm -hmm. of it. Um, well, I guess that same question is yeah. posed to me, isn't it? Yep. What were the best moments for you? Um, the, the best moments of this for me, honestly, um, I, I guess... I guess it's kind of a multifaceted question. So for me, I'm the one that picked this trailer up from the dealer. Lauren was already down here in South Florida. Um, you know, hooking up to it for the first time, kind of knowing that, you know, we had been saving and discussing this project. We, we lived in a van for about a year and we traveled through almost 30 states. Um, we knew what was gonna happen with this trailer and we had saved money and we had planned and we had drawn out all of our building plans and our electrical diagrams this was like the first physical manifestation of us actually making it happen was me me hooking it up to the van to actually bring it down here 
that that was an awesome moment for me. And then I guess ripping the walls out of this thing, because this was the first time I could really get dirty and and the first big thing we did to it was we grabbed a crowbar. Yeah, pulling the the green the parts that I painted on. It it might be in part two, but if it's not in part two, the original fasteners that hold these walls on, they look like a screw, like a Phillips head screw, but they're not a screw, they're like this twisted nail. Mm -hmm. It's like a nail, it doesn't actually screw out. It's a big pita. Yep, he has to like probably like pop them out. And that was one of my tasks was to pop all the nails out of that and all mm -hmm. those uh, staples out because of the wood. Because you don't take them out. You take a crowbar and you stick yeah. it in these cracks and you bust the wood off. And when you bust it out, it usually rips the nails out. So you've got a four by eight piece of wood with a bunch of nails, nails stuck in it. Over it. And and that's that's what she was talking about. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So the the next thing that we could think of was you've heard the best. What about the worst? What are the worst moments of this? What are they? <laughs> They're okay. Like I know like the face I just made was like, oh my god, the whole thing. But it's not. It, it wasn't. It really wasn't. The the worst part for me, like I've said in videos before, I don't like being hot. Like I don't, I don't like it. And when we first were doing this, it was mid-May. Like, well, I guess it was like first couple weeks of May. Yeah, mid-May. Say like mid-May. And being out in the sun, like we didn't have the the air conditioning unit. We didn't have any fans or anything set up. It was just us in this trailer that was this aluminum with the walls taken down. And it was so freaking hot. I was like, I like every time I'd be like, hey, do you need me right now? Because if not, I'm just gonna go jump in the pool for the rest of the day. It, it was instant sweat, oh, you guys. So bad. If, you, if you've ever <laughs> been in somewhere like Arizona, Florida, and in any sunny state, like maybe in a shipping container or a box truck, yeah. like in a warehouse, it, it gets to be about 120 degrees and but the only thing you can hope for is is airflow. Yeah. Like And all you South Florida folks, I know you're sitting there nodding your head saying, Yeah, as soon as so you take a shower, you walk outside, you need another one, you're like already wet again. Yep, it was like that. <laughs> so for me I guess that would probably be the worst. It's just kinda how hot it was. I mean there's not really much that you could do to change that in the time, like unless you're building in the winter and somewhere that it snows, like it's gonna be warm until you get your stuff insulated and installed. But as we insulated, it got much better. But the first couple of days where it was like nothing, it was, that was, for me, that was the worst. <laughs> what about you? The worst part for me was putting this ceiling in. <laughs> now let me add an addendum to that. <laughs> when I lay in bed in this trailer and I look at it, I look around and I look at my handiwork, and I go, what's the one thing that aesthetically makes this trailer pop that really gives it like a rich kind of luxurious look? It's, it's the stain and the polyurethane on these panels, but I'm five foot five and a half. I have to squeeze that last, you know, that last 0.5 out. This is a seven foot four inch ceiling. It's really high. And yeah, so I'm, I'm standing on, I'm, I'm trying to hold a, a, what is it, a seven foot wide piece, a four by seven foot piece of wood up. I'm trying to drill it in while maintaining that. I'm trying to make sure it's straight. Guys, it sucked. I completely hated putting the roof in here. Um, it's, it's one of the best features of, of this trailer in my opinion is the roof and the crown molding that we have around the, the corners. But it, it wasn't fun. I, I didn't like it. Okay. So, is there anything about the build that you would change? Or have done differently, maybe? There is. There is. So, when we came up with the idea of building this and we put things on paper, from traveling in a van, we know what type of desolate, just... What kind of like really 
there's not a whole lot in some of these places. There's no Amazon, there's no True Value, there's no Menards, there's no, there's no nothing. There's, there's not even a Walmart in some of these towns. You just look and it's just like, family dollar, I think, or Dollar General. Yeah, you get, you get a Fred's or a family dollar and that's it. Um, so we designed it to be as easy as possible. So if something goes wrong, I can diagnose it very quickly and get it get it working again. So ever so the it it looks like we've done so much, but electronically, it's like all of the AC, all of the 120 is right here. One, two, three, four. We have two circuits. One where the air conditioner is, the rest is on another circuit. It all terminates at the bottom. It's 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 a very simple design. But I came in later on, and I actually, if you guys can see behind Lauren, there's a little green extension cord that's plugged into the wall. That actually feeds power on this side. And the good thing about big crown molding is it sits at an angle. So you can actually run cords and things behind it in this little valley that's created. Um, so I've actually ran uh, electric to the other side of this trailer to power. Um, a battery charger, my laptop, um, when I'm using it at this table over here. Um, if I could do this over again, I would have done a little bit more with the 12 volt that's on the, um, the seven pin connector for the van. Maybe I would have put some auxiliary lights in here or I, I maybe would have put a bus bar off of that. I, I know you can't run a lot of current but maybe there's like some smaller stuff like our fridge that I could have had on a switch where the van could power it while we're in motion. Um, besides utilizing the seven pin van power and having electric more than just on this one wall, there's really not a lot. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Lauren, what about you? Neil. Only thing is it the shower curtain? No, it's not the shower curtain. Is it the sh so the shower curtain drags a little bit on the floor, and I'm like super like kind of anal about it. I'm like it needs to just be like touch the floor, not drag on the floor. But that's okay. The builder doesn't want water on the floor, so the lower the shower curtain is, the the you, the water can't get out from the shower curtain if you're standing on the thing. But I digress. That isn't the thing I was gonna say. <laughs> I was going to say I'd have a regular like plumbed toilet so we have a camper toilet which we used on the road in the van and it's it's fine but my whole thing is like we still have to dump it and put chemical in it kind of deal with it so I'd rather just not but everything else is is in here so it's like you know I could still deal with if it we had a, if we had a traditional toilet we'd still have a black tank and we couldn't just empty that in a regular toilet. We would actually have to go to a dump station and pay to dump it. Yeah, so either way, I'd still have to handle it, but... Future campers, if you're gonna buy a travel trailer, Love's Truck Stop actually has a dump station that you can use for a fee. I didn't know that I learned it recently. Yeah, that's my only thing. And like I said, it's not even really that, that big of a deal. It's just if I could, if I could have my, my dreams come true, I would have a regular pump toilet. <laughs> you're Aww. you're pretty. Oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so, with that being something you would change, with the overall scope of this, with everything we've talked about, everything they've seen, do you have any regrets? Is there any ragrats? The shower curtain. <laughs> no. Um. Honestly, no. I, I wouldn't say there's any regrets at all. I think. Everything has kind of come together really well. Like when we, we would sit outside a wall wall with a little drawing pad and pencil and paper and, and kind of draw up where things would be. And it's crazy to have a sheet of paper and kind of draw up something that's in your mind and make suggestions to what's going to be on this paper and then actually seeing it true to life. Um, so for me, that's really cool. And everything about it is, like I said, really cool. And yeah, no regrets. No regrets. Regrets. It's true. Regrets for you? One. I've got one. I've got one, and it's important that you all know this. Um, the floor that we're standing on right now. So when you buy these trailers, they come from the factory with some black. I I don't know if it's cosmoline or 
just pain or whatever. And I'm, I'm sure that it's, I'm sure that Forest River or whoever your manufacturer is going to be, I'm sure they chose some plywood that can take moisture and whatever. But the difference is if you just had a cargo trailer, you can pull these panels up in about 20 minutes. When you run wiring under them and you have counters and tables and you have trim work um, and showers, it becomes a lot more of a problem to pull those, that, those floor panels up. Um, I would have pulled them up and I would have polyurethane them. I would have sealed them on all four, like everywhere, every single square millimeter of, of floor panel would have some sort of a sealer on it so that when it does rain and in Florida, it's raining right now, yeah, folks. It's been raining kind of nonstop, it, but it is mon monsoon season. If you're yeah. hearing like pitter patter on our roof right now, it's actually because it's raining now. Um, the reason why I say that it's so important to have that down is because we've, you know, as you've seen, we've insulated the floor of this. So now we have not only the wood as the manufacturer or intended, but now we have a piece of insulation before the ground. So now moisture can be trapped in there. And you know, you, you really, you really want to consider that because if you get a soft floor, this, either this all has to come out or I've got to actually mark out an area and kind of like Jerry rig cut like some Lego shaped piece of floor out and replace it. And then we have to, to lay flooring back down. We have to seal that to make sure it's, you know, it's a lot of trouble. So if you're gonna do this, my only regret is not pulling every single floor panel and completely sealing it, then putting it back in, then insulating. Oh, there was one other thing that you mentioned that you would do in the ceiling that I thought was kind of cool. You said you would put twinkle lights like above the bed so it would be like starry night. That would have been cool so too. so if you look up uh, like Rolls Royce Rolls Royce has the starlight headliner um, I had this idea that I could take these panels and we could get like you know you can buy them for cars the fiber optic lighting set or you could just get some regular like string lights but do the wiring underneath the wood where you only see the lights and you could do either one either one panel or just do all of the panels I, I really thought that that would be... That would, that would have been kind of fun. I thought that would be cool. I think, yeah, like if we were to ever do something like that again, or maybe if we upgraded to something different at a later date, if we ever needed to, that would be something kind of fun to have. Just for funsies. Yeah. But <laughs> how long do you expect this cargo trailer conversion to last? What's the life expectancy that you're, you're laying down on this thing? Forever. <laughs> Um, I think that, you know, as long as there's not some sort of natural disaster that we don't account for, like we're out somewhere and a tornado comes or a fire that we can't get away from or something like that, like, um, I, I think that it's it's got at least a good 30 to 40 years in it. <laughs> like, I mean, I would guess, like, it doesn't, you know, I mean, as long as you take care of it, like, I don't see why it would... We're gonna be retiring in this thing. I like the way Lauren thinks. I like her thoughts. <laughs> Thought process. Mm -hmm. um, for me, ideally, um, I, I would like to see 20 years out of the trailer. And that's, and that's not necessarily in this iteration. Um, you know, 10 years down the road, we can gut this thing and we can completely rebuild it. I mean, God, all it is is what? Two, four, six, eight, nine ten sheets of plywood and then you count the the three core so you got you you can use like cheap three eighth plywood on the walls then you have what four four sheets four and a half sheets of three quarter on the bottom um you know we can always rebuild it but uh, i would expect the axles to go for for 20 years with proper maintenance and upkeep um you know the frame obviously it's a steel frame if you're up north, if you're in snow areas where they salt the roads, you're gonna deal with rust on, on, on the frame. The frame on this thing, I'm... It, it, it's not a hand-built Mercedes G-Wagon, okay? It's not, you're not getting a Lamborghini here. It's like the, 
the fr the frames on these things aren't the greatest. Um, but it's steel, and I know it's prone to rust, um, amongst other things. But I, I would like to see us realistically get 20 years out of it. And if that means we have to stop and, you know, weld at certain points, you know, we've got almost every other tool on the face of the planet. I guess I could buy a Harbor Freight, uh, Welder. yeah, a little, little MIG welder or something and, and do it. Uh, so... So I guess the only thing that was really left that people wanted to know is, where do you want to end up? Where do we want to end up? Well, Lord, where do you want to end up at? So I, 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 I guess where, yeah, where, where do you ultimately wanna wanna see this end? So, see, guys, I don't know the answer either. So like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in it with you. I'm, God, I want to know too, cause we're gonna. So. There's a couple of places I want to go before there's anywhere that I want to just like settle down. We've been together for six and a half years, guys. Yeah, almost seven. Seven in January here. It'll first be seven years. And there's still things you're finding out about the person. <laughs> it never stops. Never, never stops. Um, but no, for me, there's a couple of places I would like to go before I, I settle down in one spot or like choose a spot that I want to be long term. Like, I really, really want to go to the Northeast. Um, I've never been to Maine, New Hampshire, Connecticut like up in there, um, Vermont. So I, I want to visit those places. Um, I don't know that I want to really live there long term. I mean, who knows? We might go there and be like, this is the best we've ever been to. This is it. Um, but if I had to choose somewhere that I've already been, I would probably say somewhere between Wyoming, Montana, even back to like those Oregon. Beautiful areas. Um, yeah, because there it's just like even Colorado Fantastic. was really nice. Um, Utah even had some really beautiful spots. And it's just for me, like growing up in South Florida, I love the ocean, which will probably never change. But going out to the mountains was a completely different experience for me and kind of being able to go there and see them, I felt really relaxed, really comfortable. It wasn't hot all the time, you know, it was it was different. And I don't know, I guess maybe watching some of the movies that I watched growing up and like seeing people in the snowy cabins in the woods like really kind of stuck with me. So anytime even traveling when I was younger, going through mountains, I was like, I could stay here forever. So anywhere that kind of had mountains, I think I would be happy in. Um, yeah, I really liked Wyoming and Montana a lot. So. I think I would be happy with one of those, or even Colorado. Like that, that part of the country up there. Hey, you. I just want to be with you. Oh. Nothing else matters. Oh. I'm so happy just to dance with you. Just dancing. Do 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 do. I'm sorry, that's the Beatles. I. Whatever. I'm not even a big Beatles fan. I, I grew up listening to them, so. Anyways. Uh, w so we've been through almost 30 states at this point. Like 28, 30, somewhere in there. Um, I would like to see, I guess, the uh, contingent. But it's 48, right? Basically, this, this thing <laughs> is 48. <laughs> And from your angle, there's one up here, and there's like one down here. And then if you count Alcatraz, I guess it's in a little island out here. Not well, those. Part of California. <laughs> no, it's 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 off of the shore. It's it's different. You can't be part of something when you're not connected to it. It's you gotta you know you gotta do that. Anyways. Um, uh, I, I'm. I, I would like to go see the the Northeast, and I would like to visit the Northeast. I don't necessarily know if I want to settle down there, but I, I do want to go see it. You know, don't knock what you haven't been to or what you haven't tried. Some of you are probably from those areas, and I'm sure you're really great. You've probably got some really great local shops and some local restaurants Ooh. and eateries. Yes, if you guys are, if anyone that's watching this from the Northeast, please, 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 please. Comment places to see, places to eat, things that are cool in those areas, because I have always wanted to go up there, and I know next to nothing about that area. It's it's her wet dream, seriously. Mm -hmm. Like especially Maine. When Lauren's not thinking about me, she's thinking about the Northeast. It's true. 
When I'm not thinking about you and orange cats, it's the Northeast. Well, there, there you see, go. Sorry, so, you had to add the orange cats. So, so after visiting those places, I would like to see Vermont. I, I really enjoyed Cleveland. Hey, anyone watching this, if you're from Cleveland, Ohio, big shout out to your city. Um, we've been to a little town called Bedford, mm -hmm. and we've went down to with Lake Lake Erie, Lake Erie, down in the industrial area down there. Mm -hmm. um, I love that. I've, we've been to a lot of big cities, and. Cleveland is probably one of the only big, like, big metropolitan cities I've been to that, that you liked. Yeah. yeah, that I've liked at all. I'm not. I mean, like, dude, guys, <laughs> like, look, look at me. I'm like, I'm kind of like, a grease I'm boy. kind of like a grease monkey trailer baby. So, <laughs> um, I, I don't fit in well in big downtown areas, and Cleveland just has like this kind of industrial feel to it. I really like it. Um, after all of that, though. Uh, Colorado being one of my favorite states. I absolutely, uh, Estes Park, all through the Rocky Mountains, even out towards uh, uh, Junction, Grand Junction. Um, all through there, all of, the only place I've been to in Colorado that I didn't care for necessarily was Denver. And that's because I stayed at night in a pretty rough area of Denver while traveling. And um, it was it was kind of scary. I, I had to, uh, you know, I had to keep, a, keep the steel handy. Um, but ultimately I would like to settle down in the, in the desert. So Arizona, New Mexico, uh, maybe the San Bernardino area. Well, no, no. <laughs> I don't, I don't like the politics of California. So I don't, I don't. Yeah. Plus if we were that close to Disneyland, I'd have to go. And then he'd have to take me cause I can't just travel all that way to Los Angeles by myself. Yeah, friends. Go, go, go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Who wants to go to LA? I I just I just I, I it's not that I like the desert guys. I'm a utilitarian. If if you kind of get the gist of the build and everything, it's about utilitarianism. It's about simplicity. If you go out to the desert, there's no one out there. There's not a lot of regulations in those places. The land is really cheap. There's a lot of sun, and when your power kind of depends on sunshine, it it just it works for me. Um, but like Lauren said, we've been to. Um, South Dakota. You sure oh, we, we have South? Are you sure we haven't been in North Dakota? We have not been in North Dakota. The the corn the corn palace was in South Dakota. I I eighty. I yeah, 90? South Dakota's really nice too. I think it's I ninety. We we've, we've been across there, um, to go to Glacier, um, and across Wall, Wall Drug. Yeah, Wall Drug, Badlands, all that. I love those areas. Um, I wouldn't mind being up there because I do really like them. But you know, land land costs this and when you're a full-time traveler living in a, a converted cargo trailer depending on what you do you might not have a lot of this and as of right now YouTube's kind of netting us a whole lot of that so um, yeah it's like you know we'll, we'll do work camper jobs we'll kind of uh, you know do do part-time temporary gigs and things like that and we'll have money to survive but when you're talking about land that's you know up in those areas Acreage has they price it going on like the the agriculture. There's like an agriculture rate. Um, I'm sure people who deal with land probably know the the technical term for it. But there's an agricultural um, valuation they do on the land, and they price it accordingly in some of those areas. You go to the desert, you get some good old. You can play baseball all day because it's just clay. It's just clay rock, clay and rocks and sunshine and scorpions scorpions and snakes. snakes and it's like a thousand dollars an acre guys it's like a thousand an acre yeah, like yes, this guy wants to take me to rattlesnakes it's a thousand do you know me i don't do no bro we'll own land we'll be land owners and i'll be dead from a snake bite guys <laughs> hey if you own like a big fifth wheel or a big travel trailer like look this thing's small, but it's homey, and guess what? It's paid for. It's we own this, and I would like some land that we own. It's ours. It'll be ours, and then we can do YouTube for fun, and we won't care if anyone subscribes. It'll just be us doing it for the love of it, you know? Like we just we just enjoy sharing this stuff with you all. Like, unfortunately, a guy's gotta guy's gotta eat. Guys gotta eat, man. Like, gotta gotta gas up the rig. Pulling this thing around ain't cheap, man. Let me tell you something. 
I, I thought 13, 14 miles a gallon in a V8 vehicle was, was bad. Try like 7 to 9. Also, we have a cat, and he eats a lot of food, so we need money for him. He's beautiful, he's a Maine Coon mix, um, and he eats about $70 worth of wet food a month. God, he's such a fatty, Jesus he's Lord. He's a little tank. Um, yeah, he's always hungry too, he's always meowing for food. We even taught him how to do tricks to get said food, so yep. that's kind of cool. So what Good else? Boy. What else do you guys want to know? I mean, like, what else can we tell you? Look, are we done here? I think so. Listen, I'm gonna give you guys a quick once around. I know you've seen the outside of the trailer. I'm gonna give you one last inside. We're gonna ramble a little bit while we do it, and then we're gonna bid you farewell. Guys, thank you for watching the series. Listen, at the end of this video, look in the like, look down here. And the, and the very end of this video, you're going to see a playlist, and that's for Cargo Trailer Conversion Playlist. It's going to take you through every episode of this series. You can follow along with us. Um, if you've gotten this far in the video, you probably have been. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Since doing this YouTube thing, we don't have a lot of subscribers, but we do have a lot of people, about 90%, who are viewers. Um, who aren't subscribed, but just the thought that I can go on and I can look and see the hundreds of this who are interested in what we're doing and inter interested in ideas surrounding what we've done and information that we have to share. Seriously, it's, it's, it's good. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's... <clears throat> Take you for a field trip real quick. All right, I'm gonna take you for a field trip, but I'm gonna lay down. <laughs> so guys, listen, when you make these videos, here's the back side of it. There's our questions. We plan a little bit of this. Um, one of the things I haven't discussed, we made these, um, I had some leftover Lou on board, which is the ceiling board you see there. I made some templates, I cut and I stained a couple of these, which I hold on with Velcro, and they come right off. There's just four little pieces of Velcro. Um, we use those because, again, our cat Durf, if we put any kind of um, shade or curtain or blind up there, it's, it's not going to have a very long life. So we have that. And then you see um, our resident, Laren. <laughs> Please this is me napping. We have got a review coming up for this guy. It might, it's probably already on the channel if you look for it. LG 9500 BTU dual inverter air conditioner. That thing is probably kicking right now on about 500 watts. If you look at our best tech inverter video, you'll see me running that at 525 watts on 60 degrees. It's a game changer. Oh, it's so great. We got a picture of Coco. Coco. If you look underneath here, We've got a distribution panel. Uh, like, like, look, right here, guys. We have a new subscriber to the channel already. Listen, I really appreciate that. It really, it makes me very happy every time I look and I get a notification of that. It makes my heart happy, so thank you all. We have a Seaflow three gallon per minute water pump. We've got some PEX pipe. We've got a, a 20 pound propane tank. All the stuff for our water connection that you saw outside. We've got a valve and we've also got some filters in there. Right there you probably see a television mount. That mount is going to be going right up here at a later time. Down there you'll see our Alpicool K25. Got it stocked full of uh, Starbucks cold brew nitro cold brew and uh water yeah, and then the and then down here we've got some nutrition stuff some medical stuff um a couple uh, of the heavier food items some garbage bags and kind of our adult junk drawer <laughs> this right here is made by a brand called kraus it's a little uh, a little cover. It's a cover, but we can also run water through it if we have to, and it folds up. It allows us to save space. It's a great unit. 
you'll eventually get a review on that guy. And then we've got our shower right here. If you look inside of it, you'll see. Yeah, that's that's what Lauren hates. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a rag over the floor because I've got the vent open, so I don't want any mosquitoes or anything getting in or a, a draft of warm air, so I just toss a shop rag over it. You will get a review on that as well. That's Gasland. Um, I believe it's a BE110, or no, I'm sorry, BE158 propane uh, shower. That thing is bomb. It is very, 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 very hot. And then down there, this is items that are gonna go in storage once we get back up near Jacksonville. You'll see some of the tools that I use for our other reviews um, in regards to inverters and batteries and power and the uh, Beat It B10, um, that is, I just did a review on that. And then last but not least, you've got our, our uh, Thetford Campa Potty. And with that, a lot of folks on RV forums ask what kind of chemical you put into a cassette toilet. We're using the Stetford Aquachem. They make two versions of this. One that is like a, a kind of a safe, uh, revamped, um, non-formaldehyde version. And then you've got this stuff, which is the full throttle. And it does a great job. It doesn't smell. Um, you can, whatever you need to do, you're, you're good to a week with no smell. We got some prayer flags and we've got a piece of trim that is missing, but I will get it back up there. And folks, that's our home. This is it. I'm going to place you right back up here. That's what we do. This is, this is where, what we're living in. This is what we're traveling in. Um, Well, as always, and once again, we're at the end of this road. This is the end of this series, but listen, once we close out this playlist of cargo trailer conversion, you'll be able to go to our ongoing playlist of travels and adventures, and we're probably going to have things like breakdowns and blowouts and all kinds of fun things that you know we're going to make content on. If those are questions that you have, how to deal with issues like that, Go ahead and live vicariously through us. Again, we'd love to have you as part of the team. Like, uh, I'm not gonna give, I'm not gonna give their name, but just like this fellow right here. Thank you to them for subscribing, and thank you to all of you that have subscribed, all of you that check in to watch. Thanks for being part of the team. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good night. Goodbye. Au revoir. Ah! <laughs> Guys, listen. I know on this side there's a subscribe button. I know it's there. It's that little picture of our camper. Click it. Click on that. Click it. And then right here on this side, on the top, you've got our latest video. So all that new content we're going to create, there's the latest one right there. And then down there is the cargo trailer conversion playlist that I was telling you about a few minutes ago. Click on that. Watch the whole thing. It. Do it all. Click it. Click it. Click it. Cheers, everybody.